Hey, and thank you so much for joining us for Financial Confidence here on WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network. I'm your host, Lynn Demons, and we thank you for joining us for this episode. Yes, welcome to Financial Confidence, and we are going to go ahead and get started with our guiding principle for the show. Just to remind you, it is Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is first and foremost for the show, as we help you make your money, keep your money, and grow your money. We also ask that you pray over your finances so that we can continue to be the good stewards as we level up. So if you'll bow with me quickly um, as we commit this simple prayer to memory. Lord, help me value the things in this world that are really valuable. That's my relationship with you, my life, and my family. Help make me a responsible steward of the financial resources, and let us trust your holy word for the eternal glory of his son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Yes, we are super excited to have in the podcasting studio with us today, Miss Ashley Little. She is the serial entrepreneur, and she's going to be sharing some very important information with us today. We all talk about fear being a part of what often holds a person back. And we all know fear is false evidence appearing real. So we're going to have a courageous conversation today with Miss Ashley Little. Miss Ashley, how are you? I'm doing great on this beautiful Wednesday morning. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, yes. we thank you so much for being here and joining us in the podcasting studio. I wanted to ask you first and foremost, and, and I know we'll get to um, your book. You've written a, a, a chapter in this book, Dear Fear, You Can't Have My Joy. Yeah my power. I'm sorry about that. I got too excited. I was on that joy thing. Yes, you uh -huh. can't have my power either. Yes, yes, yes. and yes. <laughs> Dear fear, you can't have my power. But how did you get started on this journey as to be known as the serial entrepreneur? Well, I'm a big believer in having multiple streams of income. So, you know, I have my forex business, which I love, and I'm an author, a best-selling author, Dear Fear 2. And then I have my nonprofit. And I'm a woman who speaks circle leader as well. So it's all about just having that financial stability and working on having those seven streams of income because it's important because our jobs are not promised. So it's being able to um, get out and have those multiple streams of income so that you will be able to have that. So you will have that financial security regardless. You, know, you never know what might happen. So that's why um, I took the journey on doing more than one thing because it and everything connects I'm helping people overcome fear i'm helping people overcome their public speaking of fear you know stepping out of that shell for that and as far as my nonprofit, i'm helping our younger generation of african-american females get to the next level by helping them with their financial expenses Okay, I'm sorry. I had a little bit of a delay here on the internet, but I absolutely heard you that you have mm -hmm. many um, opportunities because what I ultimately heard is if you don't work, you don't eat, right? And your jobs are right. not promised. So they are different things that you must do. You must overcome 
um, no matter what, you know, the different situations are. So, and that's a very good point that you shared, having the multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. Dare I say, some people struggle with having just the one stream of income. So how do you balance it all? Um, because I heard you say you're, you know, a best-selling author, you have Forex, you, you know, you have different things that you do. How do you balance it all? You know, I keep a calendar. <laughs> and I work out my different times. Um, of course, I have my career, my daytime career, and then, but you know, and, and make sure I block out different times for different things with different days as well. Okay. So that's absolutely. how I do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the calendar thing is a huge piece of it. And I love the fact that our calendars today can actually send us notification. I'm a yes. huge calendar user myself, yes. setting it up and setting up the reminders. So absolutely. I hear you. It's a wonderful tool. It's if we use it, right? Yes. <laughs> and I have different it. days for different things. Right. Awesome. 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 So, um, in looking at this and because of the fact that you've written dear fear, you can't have my power. I got it right this time. I didn't mess yes, it up. Did. Dear fear, yes. you can't have my power. What are some common myths that are related to fear that people tend to tell themselves? Most of the time people fear failure. Um, they fear being uncomfortable. Mm. They fear stepping out on faith, you know, taking that job, taking that raise. You know, they, they fear those things. I think we all have those fears, but it's all about being uncomfortable. I think people are afraid. The biggest thing is being uncomfortable and afraid of failure. Uncomfortable is not a bad thing. It means that you're growing, and it's always a light at the end of that tunnel, the uncomfortable, and it's helping you grow. So those are some of the common myths that I, that I hear about fear, you know. So if people just push past those things and just step out and do it afraid, you'll never know what's on the other side if you don't just step out and do it. Whether you do well with it or whether you didn't do well with it, if you did not, you'll learn a lesson, which will help you for that next moment, get back up, dust yourself off and try it again. But you won't know until you try it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Some two, two important points that I wanted to go back to that you said is that you have to get uncomfortable. Too many of us just um, live in that comfort zone and we feel that that's just where we need yeah. to stay. And not only do we feel we need to stay there, chances are others who are surrounding us also feel we need to stay in that comfort zone. And many times they won't push you outside of that comfort zone to get to your next. So I, I love that you shared that. And then the, the other piece too that was that's invaluable is the fact that you, whether you yeah. do it right and you win yeah. or you do it wrong and you yeah. lose, what's most important is that you learn from that experience. And that's the best thing that we can do for ourselves yeah. as we push through this, mm -hmm. you know, pushing mm -hmm. past your fear, as you said. So um, why do people fail then when it comes to fear? We know that we got to get outside of our comfort zones and we know that we can learn from these situations. But why is it that you think that people fail, continue to fail over and over and don't really push past that fear? Because they're scared. You know, they feel like, you know, failure is a bad thing. It's not. I don't know one successful person huh. that has not failed. So it's all about just picking yourself back up and pushing through. And learning that lesson and then just being able to enjoy the process. Everything in life is a process and every win has a process attached to it. And most of us want the win, but we don't want to go through the process. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that's good right there. That's good. You want the win, but you don't want to go through the process. You, and that's um, inevitable. I think about the football teams around here in this local area and how hard they have to go to practice, getting up in the morning for those a.m. practices, coming back in the evenings for those afternoon practices. And the, and the players, they hate it, right? But it's something you got to go through to get to the win. And the same thing applies to us in our life and our finances as we push past this fear, this fear thing, right? So that's right. good. That's good right there, Ashley. I like that. So yeah. um, so I also know that you've pushed past fear in many things. I, and yeah. one of the things that I, I wanted to talk about, and I want you to share with the listeners, is about this, this Sweetheart Scholarship. 
this is a tremendous opportunity that um, I want you to tell us a little bit more about it. Go ahead and share the story with us. So our sweetheart Scout is nonprofit. I'm one of the founders. It's three other women as well. And we came together because we wanted to be able to go back into our community that raised us in Anson County, which is Waysboro, North Carolina, to reach back and pull forward. What we noticed was that a lot of our girls, our young African-American females, were not getting a lot of scholarships and were not being recognized for their accomplishments. And, you know, they were being overlooked. So we wanted to be able to go back and give back and change and change that. And that's mm -hmm. what we did. Because it's all about reaching back and pulling forward, okay? And so mm -hmm. we wanted to go back and mentor our young girls, give money, you know, to them to help them with their financial expenses, to help them through college, okay? And also they had a process they had to go through. They had to do their applications. They had to give us their acceptance letters, look at their GPA. They had to go through an interview. It was a very intense process to get through this. And we're so thankful. We thought we were going to just have two girls, but we ended up with four girls. So this year for our first time. So we are so excited about our um, four girls and we are going to continue to make the scholarship even bigger every year and continue to create this legacy. And they're going to be part of it as well. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Okay. So in looking at your scholarship venture and, and being one of the co-founders, what were some of the challenges that you faced in getting started? Because oftentimes that's not a, a simple, small feat, right? That's right. not something that you just go out and just do because you want to do that. So, so how did you overcome the, the challenges, first of all, that were related to this opportunity? Well, we had to make a lot of sacrifices. You know, everybody's in their careers and they have things going on. We had to make a lot of sacrifices through our weekly meetings, sometimes twice a week, sometimes once a week, or maybe twice. Um, mm -hmm. We had to sit down and write out our interview um, questions and right. what we were looking for and go through the processes with the schools to make sure that they were on, a, on the same page with us and accepted our scholarship and being able to meet those deadlines and being able to go through all the packages and make sure that we're being fair, reading the acceptance letters, reading the recommendation letters, interviewing our candidates. So I mean, it was a very intense process. It wasn't easy, no, but we love challenges, you know, and we were determined that we were going to make this happen. And that's what we're doing. And we're continuing. We're still in our building phase. We're still adding things on to make it even better next year, going through different processes, creating different tools and resources to uh, increase our nonprofit and do partnerships and things like that. So it's still a process and we're loving it. And is it easy? No, but we love it. But it's something that we want to do. And it's something that we're passionate about. And we're passionate about reaching back and pulling forward and helping our next generation get to the next level. Awesome. I love that yeah. because your mission aligns very much with ours, right? Helping to yeah. pull someone else up, pull us right. up by our bootstraps so we can get to our next level yes. um, and continue to grow together. So how, how do, could someone help the organization? I know that you need funds to be able to provide these scholarship opportunities to the girls. Yeah. And, and you mentioned that you have partnerships. How can someone join if they wanted to be able to support this opportunity? And not only supporting the opportunity, how can others join who may be interested in receiving so i know that's two questions in one um mm -hmm. how can someone help you on the philanthropic side of things get the funding to fund the scholarships and then how can the girls find out about the scholarships is essentially is what i'm asking well how they can help if they're interested in doing sponsorships they can reach out to me at ashley little and my email address is a little zero eight at gmail.com and we can go from there my cell number is seven five seven 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 three five five zero four our website is we're working on it now it should be up soon our facebook page should be up soon as well but those are the ways you can reach out to us right now and then we can go from there and talk about those next steps and then your next question was how can they be a part of it right now we have our scholarships here for our girls here in um anson county in waysboro north carolina so if someone else wanted to apply for the scholarship, we're trying to branch it out other than Waysboro right now, but we haven't did it yet. So if they do want to apply, they still can reach out to me and we can go from there. Okay, awesome, awesome. So guys, you heard it. She gave you your, her email address and her phone number. So there are no excuses if you want to give or if you want to also be a part um, of this great opportunity. So let's get back to the fear conversation because I know sometimes it's a scary thing, even for the girls who are applying and going through this process for the scholarships, mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. also fear um, in the lives, just just say of the everyday adult. There are things that we face on a regular basis that can be fearful um, for 
for us. So what are some steps to overcome fear, right? What are some of the steps for the everyday person who seeks to do something outside of the box? The first thing is do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do it afraid. Don't be afraid to be uncomfortable. Don't be afraid to be uncomfortable. Ignore what they say. Yeah. That's the big thing. We always worried about what other people think or what they might say. And a yes. lot of people miss their calling and miss their dreams because of what you or what other people might we're well, afraid of what other people might say. So ignore the distractions and don't worry about what they say. And right. just do it. Do it scared, <laughs> do it uncomfortable, take the risk. And if you don't do well, learn from it. Dust yourself off and continue to push through it. I don't know, like I said it before, one successful person who has not failed. So for anybody who's afraid to take that leap, just do it. Take the risk. Mm -hmm. Do it. That's the biggest yes. thing is just doing it. I absolutely. I love that. And I love that you shared that because I also share that concept um, in teaching people how to invest. Yeah. A lot of people don't invest because they say there's risk involved. It's overwhelming. I'm afraid to lose money. All of these things come into place. But really, like you said, those are just distractions. There are simple things that you can do to remove those distractions, push them out of your way right. so you can get to your next, whether that's investing, whether that's your life, whether you're being a serial entrepreneur, whether you're being a wife, a mother, or Whatever the case may be, it fits in all situations. And yeah. I love it. I'm sorry we had to borrow from Nike, but guys, you got to just do it, do right? It. <laughs> <laughs> you got to just do it. You got to push past whatever it is. And, and another thing, guys, that she said that is so very important that we must understand, we're always out here listening to what the world says. We're always listening to what someone else says. And we're not really listening to what the Bible says about us. He told us that we are overcomers. He told us that we're meant to have life and have it more abundantly. He mm -hmm. told, the Bible tells us, guys, then and why are we sitting around here and allowing fear to overtake our dreams, to overtake our lives, to overtake our finances as we try to get through? Like Ashley said, y'all just push through, dust yourself off and keep it moving. I love it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go on a little tangent right there, but yeah. you know that that was just good. Those are some good things that we had to share. So in getting back to our questions that we have, this, this last question I wanted to share what are some things that a person um, should do finance-wise to begin this journey as an entrepreneur? Because you are a serial entrepreneur, and we all know that it takes money to make money in many right. cases. However, mm -hmm. there are some things that you can do. So finance-wise, what are some, some of those steps that a person can take who wants to become um, that entrepreneur? Well, basically creating your budget and knowing what you're passionate about, making sure that it's worth the investment on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, normally if you're passionate about it, you'll be, you'll, you'll invest in it. So those are the two things that I would recommend for anybody to do and make sure, like I said, keep a budget, know when you can do it and how can you do it and what's going to be, uh, what you're going to have to sacrifice in order to make those things happen. Because you're right. It takes money to make money and nothing's free. You know, yeah. and just doing your research and making sure that this is, you have a good ROI, your return of investment is going to be worth it. Absolutely. And most I, of I, all, pray yeah. about it. I, make sure <laughs> that you're being led. Make sure this is what he wants for you to do and it's led right. in your path. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. You pray about it, then you act. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I love to, guys, one of the things that we talk about all the time here is budgeting. Make sure you know your numbers. It does yeah. you absolutely no good to go through this process. You don't know what's coming in. You don't know what's going out. If you don't plan, you fail to plan, right? You plan mm -hmm. to fail. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's as cliche as it sounds. It is simply the truth. So you definitely must have that budget, guys, to get this thing started. Make sure that you are aware of everything that uh, you plan to do as you move forward. Well, Ashley, is there anything, any closing thoughts that you would like to share with the listeners um, on this fear or your sweetheart scholarship or anything else that you would like to bring to the forefront? Uh, well, we're going to continue our book tour. I had my first one in um, D.C. this past June. It went awesome. I should be in North Carolina on September 7th and Atlanta on September 8th. I'm on, you know, many different podcasts that are coming up and different events that I'm doing. If you would like to purchase my book, you can go to my Facebook page at Ashley Little or you can follow me on Instagram at Miss Glamorous Ash. 
I have uh, my own PayPal me account right now because my website is being worked on. So if you would like to purchase the book, it's $23, including shipping and handling. And I sign all of my supporters. I send them a signed copy of the book. So if you would like to purchase, just reach out to me via email at aalittle08 at gmail.com. Or you can find me on Facebook at Ashley Little, and we can go from there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Ashley, it has been a pleasure having you on and talking about our fear. Remember, fear is false evidence appearing real, y'all. Right. We got to push past that and get to our next level. Do what we are called to do in this day. Well, guys, we want to thank you so much for joining in here with Financial Confidence on WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters. We also invite you to donate to WYTV7. Go to WYTV7.org and donate as we continue to share the message and build the kingdom. But ultimately, here on Financial Confidence, we are helping you everyday people make your money, keep your money, and grow your money. Thank you so much for spending your time with us because we know that your time is your most precious commodity and you can't get these minutes back. But you decided to spend those with us and we appreciate you for that. Thank you so much for staying here with us on Financial Confidence.